It was 2013. I was out of Mississippi. Okay. And where did I met my son and wife who were celebrating on eight years ago today? I met her of all places, Facebook. Yes, the same Facebook that told me or anybody that advertised MLM and uh, and internet marketing that we can't do it because they'll they'll shut you down in a heartbeat. The same Facebook on a disabled Christian group, yeah, disabled Christian dating group, is where I met the beautiful, the lovely Teresa Denel Porter. Fast forward, November thirteenth, my birthday. 2014, which was the happiest day of my life. I felt like I won the championship, WWE championship of the world, and she won the uh, WWE women's championship. Because on November 13, 2014, we got married at the Springfield Courthouse. And I still remember that day. I still remember that day. Because we was dressed, and then the other people that was getting married, I guess that they had on casual outfit. And then after the wedding, after the wedding, the judge literally, and I mean literally, the judge that married us, the judge that performed the wedding ceremony, literally came out and shake our hand. And, I mean, that's, 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 that spoke something right down. I haven't been in a suit. The last time I've been in a suit was my, my wedding day. Okay. So we was married for a year, 20, 2014, 2015, and then picture it back eight years ago. We were still on a learning curve, but we were still new to it. We had lost our, we even lost our, well, I lost my mother-in-law. She lost, uh, she lost her mother in a terrible fall. Her mother beat cancer. She had cancer. We was there through much of the uh, the chemotherapy treatments that she had. And then the, one of the most emotional things that I ever got to in the history of being a human being, my mother-in-law. Although we had the most funniest fight ever when I accidentally called my own wife a husband and said I was saying, I'm her husband and she's my wife, had it a crack of love laughing in the bathroom of all places. But then one of the most emotional things that I ever had to do for somebody in honor because she was so weak and tired from the chemotherapy treatment. She asked me. She asked me. Her son-in-law. To write the bell for her. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat if I had to. I was so happy to ring that bell for her to think like that she beat cancer. And I'm, ha- and I'm happy to do it because why? Because she was the mother-in-law of the most beautiful person that I ever, ever had the pleasure of knowing. Um, yeah, she was in the house, I guess, when we was going to the store, and what happened was, when she fell, you know, she died. She was alone. And we was at the store getting things for not only for us, but also for her. Because we go on tr- store trips almost like, either every month or every week or every whatever the time that we have. And that day, that faithful day, I couldn't talk. Because my wife was trying to keep me out of seeing her body, and it was too late. I came in already, and I was trying to be strong for her, but I failed miserably. I, could, I couldn't speak for hours. I couldn't speak for hours. Hours. And, uh, you know, it was so real. And it was so real. Then we moved to the mother's house, and, you know, that became instant to her after... After the incident, still have learning curves, and I 
was in school at the moment. Still, uh, I was in school at the moment. I was in college. I was trying to get to college, but couldn't do that. Uh, then, eight years ago today, matter of fact, eight years ago last night, last night, I see all this trauma before all this trauma started right here in the interim second palace. Well, I was studying for one of my classes. My wife was taking a nap or going to sleep. And then I thought something odd happened. And I had my own DTA issues. If you're not a part of wrestling fan, you know that DTA don't uh, don't trust anybody. But my DTA issues is when I can't trust anything that I'm going through, but uh, or don't trust somebody that hurts you or harm you or stuff like that, or even things and events such as this. You have a DTA moment, and so. She all of a sudden stopped breathing. I panicking. I'm calling nine one one. I even I even did the things I was supposed to do as a husband. Uh, but uh, the ambulance was the one that did you know the CPR and everything. I was frantic. I was I was like help 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 help. I was I was nervous. You gotta understand. I'm I'm legally blind. Don't know what to do. Don't want to hurt anybody. I mean, you know, I love her. I love her. And so I was, I was scared to death. I was literally, I was practically scared to death. And did you hear me? Do you hear me? I was scared to death. So, um, when the ambulance came, they got a, they got a revive. And even the cops told me I did all I could do. I and I even called nine one one. The cops even told me that I had to do the right. I, I, I done the right thing. Even the cops told me that. Even the cops told me that. And so, I was in the waiting room because uh, I, I couldn't go in the ambulance with her. For some reason, I couldn't go in the ambulance with her. And so I, I, I rode in the squad car to the hospital. I did not know that it'll be a climation of the nightmarish events that will unfold that would have changed my life for the worse. That literally changed my life for the worse. Then, I still remember like it was yesterday. I was uh I was in the uh the waiting area. And then I remember an ENT, an IC and T gave me twenty dollars because I did dude that was going through something. If I leave my gave me twenty dollars that I could get them to eat. Probably when I could because I thought I thought it was just gonna be a routine. You know, either that what they were gonna observe my wife or keep overnight and then we go go back home the next day. Didn't think nothing bad was gonna happen. Didn't think no and then uh, later on I was gonna go go in there, gonna go be with her, support her. In a type of deed. So I went to the bathroom. And then when I came out, I was met by a gentleman that was a nurse. And so, okay, so I thought that I was going to go back to be with my wife. Yeah, I thought I was going to go back to be with my late wife in the ER room. Nope, that was not the case. So, I couldn't put two two together because I was put in some room. You all know, you know, when you you lost a, a loved one, you all know that room. You all know that room when you lost somebody. I can still remember the doctor's name. I don't remember the chaplain's name. But I do remember the chaplain. I do remember Dr. Renee. 
Dr. Renee will go down as an evil villain in Big D Country for the rest of my life. I don't even know how I'm still here today. And I'm, all, all I'm doing is struggling. I don't even know how I'm still here today. But Dr. Irene will go down as the most biggest heel if this was wrestling. And I would be the baby face. So, the, the, the chap I didn't know it was a chaplain until it was the dude that a chaplain. I didn't, I, didn't know what, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't know there was a chaplain. I knew half of the head chaplain, yes. But I didn't know that was coming from my case. Then Dr. Renee just told me the words that shattered 50 country in just a few seconds. She had the the, the, the call and the audacity to tell me that my late that my life that my wife had passed away. I was freaking out. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail. Not like they kept telling me it's not my fault. It's not my fault. They kept telling me it's not me. It was a medical emergency. I was still going, no, I don't want to go to jail. No, I, was, I was freaking out. I was literally freaking out. I was literally distraught. I was in pain. As, the, as, the, as, the, as that, that, that news went on, they still they had to take some convincing that it was a medical emergency, and she died of a cardiac arrest. She died of a cardiac arrest, and it was so sudden. Even as she got into the hospital after they, they after she was revived, I didn't know how long I was going to sit in that uh, in that waiting room outside the uh, ER. I had no clue. I had no clue. So after that whole mess, I don't I donated I gave permission to donate her eyes because she had beautiful eyes and it would go well to a deserving individual. I didn't know if she was an organ donor or not, but uh, I know I'm a, I'm an organ donor. You know you could save lots of lives if you if you put that you would be willing to give your organs at the time of death. You can save a lot of lives. I have an organ donor signia on my ID, and I will get it if I'm still able to get an ID. But that's it. The day is after and before the funeral was the most humiliating the most embarrassing, the most nerve-wracking of my entire existence on this planet Earth. And I say, if I have to have a part two because most of the, if it be long, won't make it to you two, because I have to sing the one of his Presley song, An Amazing Grace. That's why I was going to, wasn't going to come on the VC because, or the game because I'll be a wreck. But I wanted to do this public uh, display of profession toward my late wife because it's the right thing to do. And it shows that I still love her. And it shows that I still miss her. And she has been and always will be the first queen of Big D Country, even if I am lucky enough to marry somebody else. Um, I had called suicide hotline four times, four times, and I think one year I called it again once. I even spoke at the funeral. I cried. I did sing to her at the uh, when they gave me and her time alone. You know, with a casket, but it gave me the time alone with the with the casket alone, in one of the rooms that they usually have for weeks. 
much smaller server did. Uh, because her service was a graveside service. And I talked to her. I thanked to her. And then it was time that I got to cut the her big thing. I'm like, we're clapping. And it was time for to go to the, the funeral. And and so the service started. I did have them. I did record it, but it was uh, right at before I lost the YouTube channel. And I couldn't hold together by the time it was time for me to speak to get the eulogy. After everybody else spoke, now I was told it was, uh, I was told not to say because if I say that it'll be so, it was so heartbroken because they knew that I I was a loving husband, and uh, I actually fell on the way to my aunt's car at the time. My aunt by my wife's side. My late wife died. And. And then. I almost pa I almost passed out. I was seeing flashbacks when I had to go to the court for probate to protect our, the house. And then later on, the house was sold back to my family member. But. Uh, I went into probate. With my aunt, and I was getting flashback, and I nearly fainted. I was sick. I was literally sick. And that's when the PTSD actually started for me. We had to go to court. Oh, I'm gonna make this a part two. This will be the part two of the acknowledging of my late wife and uh, the singing of a two song. I'm going to get Islands of the Street. That was our song. I'm going to get that. And yes, YouTube, I will be singing, though. Whether you give me a trouble or not, I don't care. This is my late wife's day. This is my late wife's day. I'll be right back.